From the heartland of America and the gateway to the West, good morning, good evening, wherever you may be across the nation, around the world. I'm George Norrie. This is Coast to Coast AM. Later tonight, the science of consciousness. Here's what's happening. The International Red Cross has taken custody of 12 hostages released by Hamas. Israeli Defense Forces say 10 of the hostages are Israeli citizens, two more are foreigners. They did not clarify the nationality of the non-Israelis. The announcement marks the fifth group of hostages to be released by Hamas since Israel agreed to a ceasefire with the terrorist group. The ceasefire expected to continue through Wednesday. We shall see what happens after that. China has brought back masks and social distancing and a chilling echo of a lockdown as they battle a mysterious pneumonia outbreak four years after the COVID situation. Alarming footage has emerged of mask-wearing crowds inside Chinese hospitals as fears of a new pandemic sweep across the globe. Dr. John Curtis, onlinecolumnist.com with us here. John, here we go again. Can we say that? Uh, no, this is not a, a coronavirus or anything that's manufactured in a laboratory like the last one was in Wuhan. Um, this is a, a function, George, of... Uh, at least the research that I've done, of China being locked down for so long. Remember that China never unlocked itself right. after COVID. So a lot of these children who are catching these respiratory viruses that are largely bacterial in nature and not viral are uh, seasonal flu viruses, basically, that go respiratory. There was an RSV virus that was circulating, and then uh, one that's called a, a mycoplasma. Have you heard of that one? A mycoplasma. Yeah, and that's a, a virus that quickly goes in the lungs, especially of children that have uh, immune systems that are uh, young and, uh, in, and been uh, quarantined for the last three years, basically, and wearing masks and the like. So I think they do, do the CDC and the WHO do not believe that this is a virus that will spread um, around the globe. They think it's pretty much going to be contained within a specific scenario in China that results from lockdowns and excessive, you know, sort of protections against uh, viruses that has gone on for the last four years. So it's kind of a rebound effect. It's like if you were in a bubble and, you know, somebody coughed on you and you haven't been in circulation for a while, you're going to be very vulnerable to infection. And that's what's happening to a lot of Chinese youth. Well, this all but stays contained there. John Curtis' website, onlinecolumnist.com. Consuming certain foods and drinks could put people at a higher risk of developing colorectal cancer, according to a new study published in the journal Nutrients. Researchers from a university in China analyzed 139 dietary factors and their impact on the risk of developing the cancer. They also found that other dietaries, the first two, alcohol and white bread, were found to increase the risk regardless of genetic factors. Six other dietary elements, fiber, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, manganese, and carbohydrate intake were all found to lower the risk of colorectal cancer. U.S. home prices continued to rise in September, hitting a new record high and marking the eighth consecutive month of increases. Even as mortgage rates linger around 7 percent, historically low inventory continues to push the price of a home up. Here's investment advisor Charles Coppas with us. Charles, is this good or bad news for people? Oh, I don't know if it's either. You know, you got to keep in mind that these are the uh, home listing or sales prices that that they're quoting here. And you don't always get what you're asking for. They might as well, not, they might as well call it the greed index. But, uh, you know, according to a survey, the average listing uh, has been around $480,000, but the median purchase price is around 410000 That's what people buy it for, which is actually down 17% from just a year ago, according to the Census Bureau. But, yeah, I mean, we have uh, low inventory. Existing home sales have hit a 13-year low and down 40% since January in 2020 that was before covid and of course inventory has been very low uh even uh new home sales are down 34 percent since uh, 2020 and sitting at a 60-year low and that goes back to 1963 i mean it's really you know home builders are offering
offering all kinds of incentives, discounts, and rate buy-downs, I guess. But the real estate market's basically dead. You just don't have buyers and sellers. And, you know, this is happening because the Fed is raising rates, started raising rates last year. I think it's 7.3% on a 30-year. And uh, housing affordability is too high for people. 80%, you know, need financing. And the lenders, the banks, are also having a liquidity crisis on top of it. So, you know, you see bank loans and credit are contracting like it was before 2008. This is the real estate market. Now banks have negative equity to, you know, to boo with low-yielding bonds. But so starting last year, you have the depositors been moving cash into money market accounts aggressively. It's almost six trillion dollars now, or they're chasing yield in the risky markets. But you know, we're also seeing large banks closing branches, laying off employees around the country. So All over the place, good. yeah. And uh, you know, even the Fed is having problem with higher interest rates. You know, recent auctions, they can't find buyers for the long duration bonds at 4.3%. Well, you know, when people can get 5% on the short-term treasuries. And this is a classic inverted yield curve. It always indicates a recession, almost always. Uh, there was a time when China and Japan used to buy about 22% of our debt. Now it's only about 7%. And I saw one writer, he said, it's the worst bond market since the Civil War based on supply and demand of, of bonds. I mean, and now you have the rating agencies also downgrading U.S. sovereign debt lately. I mean, at what point do we become uncreditworthy? I keep wondering that because our national debt's $33 trillion. The closest nation is the U.K. at $9 trillion. And we can't keep doing this. Even if the Fed stops raising rates, which they probably will, the damage is done. I see a recession in the new year. And as far as real estate, um, it's going to take time to return to normal, whatever that is. And you know, I, I know it's Christmas time. I'm always sharing bad news, but there is good news for people in my business. We're, we are seeing gold and silver going up sharply this week, and that's something I can help people with. So no matter what the future holds, George, I still wish everyone a Merry Christmas and you too. All right. In your book, America's Financial Reckoning Day. Thanks, Charles. You take care. We'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. The TSA announced that Sunday set an agency-wide record for the busiest air travel day ever. More than 2.9 million people were screened at airports across the United States on Sunday after Thanksgiving, marking the busiest day ever for air travel. How about that? In a moment, Leslie McGork joins us. The power of Mercury. We're going to talk about astrology next on Coast to Coast AM. And welcome back to Coast to Coast. Leslie McGork back with us, internationally acclaimed astrologer who is breaking new ground in the world of mental health. As she collaborates with Western-trained doctors to put forth a new vision of holistic healing. Her groundbreaking work is bridging the gap between how astrology explains the personality, whereas science is unable to do that. Leslie has been studying the system of astrological imprinting for more than 40 years, and her level of accuracy is undeniable. She states her accuracy as being about 95%, and currently the medical community is gathering data that confirms that. She's the founder of the Astrology Wisdom Academy, where she brings astrology to life using creativity and storytelling. And her latest book is called The Power of Mercury. Leslie, welcome back. How have you been? I've been great. Hi, everybody. It's great to be here today. Did you have a nice Thanksgiving? Yes, it was very lovely and nice and quiet. I didn't go to an airport, so I was very happy. <laughs> <laughs> More holidays coming. Yes, exactly. How'd you get involved in astrology, Leslie? Well, my mom uh, was worried about me when I was 19 years old, and she didn't have any tools in her toolbox to figure out how to help me, but her good friend had a daughter who was an astrologer in New York City, so my mom made an appointment and took me, and this woman sat me down, and she knew everything about me, George. I was blown away. I was also very nervous because I didn't understand how could this total stranger know my soul. She had this amazing wisdom, and I decided at that moment that I was going to do everything she suggested. She said I was highly creative. I didn't really feel that at the time, but she was 100% right, and I ended up writing and illustrating 20 children's picture books and became a well-known designer in Japan. She told me I was going to um, have great success overseas with other countries, I mean, every single thing she said about the good stuff in my chart that was possible if I followed the correct path was extremely 
good advice for me because I now look back on my life, and if I had not met her, George, at age 19, I'm not sure I would still be here. She wow. understood that I have uh, what I call a pretty gnarly chart in that I have a like a one-inch pathway that I can walk through, and if I go off of it, it's, it's not the easiest chart. But if I stay on the path, which is what astrology can do for people, all of a sudden, you can have a miraculous, beautiful, amazing life. And her exact words to me were, you know, you are very well compensated for some of the anguish you're going to go through. And I thought, all right, uh, as long as I know I can get through it, um, I can deal with it. And I think that's the beautiful thing about astrology is that it's a very comforting amazing way to guide your life and i look at it as if it's like those thunder shirts you put on a dog when a mm -hmm. dog gets anxious astrology has this ability to calm you down and to me that's one of the greatest gifts we have on this earth is that there is actually a scientific it's an esoteric science it's not hard science it's a a lot like acupuncture in that you could go to 20 acupuncturists and get a totally different result. Same thing with astrology. It's an interpreted science, and you have to be able to understand the language of astrology. And for me, I, because of being a creative person, I have figured out a way to calmly and in a very real way help people understand their human design, their pattern, how they were create it to be. And my job is, my calling basically, is to invite people to reach their highest vibrancy, their highest illumination of themselves. And that's what I'm very much interested in helping people with. Good for you. Now, Leslie, astrology will tell us things that could be, things that are, but will it tell us things that we can fix? Yes, um, definitely. Because what happens with astrology is that it's a lot like a meteorologist who's telling you it's going to hail later this afternoon or thunder and lightning. If you know what the pattern is out there, then you can take your car and do the right thing so that you're not in danger. The same is true with astrology. You have to be able to navigate through life, but if you don't have the weather pattern to help you navigate, what happens is that people get very highly charged about situations. And when you're highly charged about something, whether it's positive or negative, then you're attached to that in a way that can make you very anxious. So what it does, astrology has this way of helping you regroup and if you understand what's going on, then you can deal with it. It's the not knowing that is very scary. And I think that astrology, is, as I said, it's one of the greatest gifts we have on this planet. And a lot of people don't understand what it is because they think it's fortune telling. But that's not how I use it. I believe that we're living in new and unusual times, and new times require a new language and a new kind of map of meaning for people. So astrology is a tool. I don't think it's fortune-telling. It's not a deterministic dimension of life, like your DNA is not a deterministic dimension. It's a map to interpret and translate these new times so we can get through life with a lot more ease and flow. Now, with astrology, who, would, who predicts the future, the astrologer or the astrology? Um, <laughs> the astrologer is the one who, quote-unquote, is predicting the future, but I believe we, we have free will. We, we're driving our own car. What an astrologer, a good astrologer, should be doing is looking at the the pattern that you were born with. So we're all basically, metaphorically speaking, driving a particular type of vehicle. And some of us are in Jeeps and some of us are in Ferraris. We have to work within the wiring system that we were created with, just like every other thing on this earth. It has a pattern. We, we were born with a pattern. And a Basset Hound has a very different um, kind of system than a greyhound. One can run really fast and one has short stubby legs. 
You can't make a basset hound into a greyhound. We have to work with what we've been given. And that's the beauty of astrology is that once you understand this about yourself, then you can calm down and then you can work with it. And we don't have to feel so disjointed. And that's the great gift that the astrologer gave me when I was 19. She set out the path and I followed it. And because of it, she also said, by the way, eventually, she said, after you're an artist and a writer, you're going to eventually be doing more with astrology and helping people. And I'm, you know, I'm 19 years old. I know nothing about astrology. And I'm thinking, wow. But she said, if you do this, um, you're going to have this amazing life. And I have. I've had a very, very interesting life. And you all sure these have. incredible experiences I've had help me now when I'm working with my clients, because especially in the health, mental health area and the physical health area, um, I've got a lot of information that I can share with people. And I, I feel that, as, again, it feels to me like this is a calling and something that I was designed to do. If you see something negative or bad with astrology and you tell the client that, will that be enough information to help them avoid the bump in the road? Yes. So I'll give you a perfect example. It's going on for me right now. Sure. I've got in my chart, my natal chart, I was born with an aspect of being accident prone. And the astrologer, when I was 19, said, you look really healthy and athletic, but she said, Leslie, you have to be really careful of your health. So I deal with this every day, that this is not going to change. But if I work with it, I actually can stay very healthy. So right now, George, what's happening up in the cosmic weather patterns, I'm getting a double whammy hit of planetary weather that's making me more uh, accident prone than ever. So recently I was playing pickleball and I just got tackled on the court by my partner in a tournament. And I thought to myself, there we go. This is, this is what we're talking about. And I realized, okay, Leslie, you give advice to people all the time. Just because the weather is telling you that you have a tendency towards this doesn't mean you have to give into it. So what I started doing was getting more into yoga and things that help ground me and things that help me balance. So as long as I'm aware of what's going on around me, I can navigate through it. It does not have to determine that I'm going to have an accident. You have to really work um, around it and be very aware of it. And then it doesn't have to manifest as anything. And you tell people their life purpose, uh, their professions. You give all kinds of advice, don't you? Yes. Uh, so I can tell what people were designed to do. And sometimes it's super specific. For example, I had a woman who um, used to be in the banking industry, and she quit that and was trying to figure out a new direction for her life, and she had absolutely no idea what to do. And I looked at her chart, and I said, wow, I said, you're designed to reconfigure the way children learn. And she said, what are you talking about? I have no background in education. I said, it's all over your chart. You're here. You're going to become well-known for something you do in education, you're going to change the way children um, get educated. So fortunately, George, she listened to me. At first she was laughing and said, Leslie, you're crazy. Well, guess what happened? Within six months, she started uh, a company that she was going to try bringing more creativity and new ways of learning into the educational system. And within you know, a year, she got a $600,000 grant wow. to keep this nonprofit going, and she's been doing this now for over 15 years. So my point, and this is where astrology, again, is so incredibly useful, is that if you do what you were designed to do, your life works. It's easier. When you fight the tide of your natural way of being, it gets tricky. So another time I can tell you about is a woman who I looked at her chart and I saw that she was doing something that was super creative. I knew she was supposed to be doing something with lots of people. She was, I said, you're almost like a therapist, but I said, what you're doing is very unusual and very kind of quirky and um, not normal at all. I said, I have no idea what it is you, you're doing or supposed to do, but it's in that realm. Well, it turns out she was a piercer. That's what she does for a living. And it's not something I would ever think of, 
but it totally fit with the description that the chart was telling me. I just didn't have the specific words for it. So sometimes I do. I can figure out, just pinpoint exactly what someone's supposed to do. And sometimes it's a general description of, of a career, of the way it's supposed to be. And then it could be a whole multitude of things. All right. Hold on, Leslie. We're at a break. We'll come back and chat more. And I understand we're going to take readings next hour. We'll tell folks later what we need from them. And welcome back to Coast to Coast. George Norrie back with astrologer Leslie McGuirk. Leslie, you call yourself an intuitive astrologer. Is that different from a general astrologer? I think so. Um, I believe it's a lot like musicians. There are some people who are technically good at playing the piano, and then there are other people who have like an intuitive sense of how to play, so there's a different level. So I'm mo much more of an intuitive person rather than a technical person, and I think there's a real difference in the art world um, whether you've got the ability to render something and make it look perfect in real life or someone who's really got an original style with how they do it. It's not that one is better than the other, but I definitely fall in the category of being more of the creative, intuitive type. You, you wrote a book called The Power of Mercury. Tell me about mercury and what do they mean by retrograde? Okay, so in the old days with the uh, people looking up at the stars the way we watch television, they were mystified by the fact that some of the planets looked like they were stopping and going backwards. It's an illusion. It's not really the case. But they started to associate these ancient people with um, these periods where things looked like they were going backwards with bad luck or that it was uncomfortable. So Mercury retrograde, which rules communication and travel, signing contracts, when it goes retrograde, it appears to many people that these times are stressful. You can't count on things going right. And if your computer breaks or your car breaks, it's never fun. Um, oftentimes when these things happen, they're not permanent. They're just more fluky. And we have to realize that these Mercury retrograde times are actually healthy for us because it forces us to slow down. We live in a very fast-paced world, and many of us are not taking time to reconnect with nature and communicate with others. Uh, we're so busy that we're exhausted half the time. So the good thing about a Mercury retrograde period is that you can regroup. And I think of it like, again, with the car, is it bad that your car can go in reverse? No, it's actually a good thing, George, because if you can't get into reverse, you can't get out of your driveway. You can't parallel park. So there's nothing ever totally negative. Everything has a reason for why it is the way it is. And the other reason why I wrote the book is because the people who were born during one of these wacky Mercury retrograde periods, for us, and I'm one of these people, it's only 20% of the population, by the way, during Mercury retrograde, those of us who were born during one of those times, for us, it's the time when everything falls into place. We have the exact opposite relationship with the period than other people do. So what that means is that for us, when it goes direct, we feel the way all the rest of the people feel when it's retrograde. So I live with the constant feeling of Mercury retrograde because most of the year, it's direct, which for me would feel backwards. So when I get these Mercury retrograde periods, it's like, yay, it's better for me. So I have hmm. to learn to just live with uh, the uncomfortable fact that things sometimes just get squirrely, and it's just life. It's just the way it is. It happens all the time. When we take calls next hour, you need their birth month, day, and year, and a direct question? Yes, that'd be great. Super. And Tom will get the info, and I'll pass it on to you as we chit-chat with people. Why does it work? Why does it work? Okay, that's a great question. So let's talk about the fact that we are an electromagnetic system. All you have to do is get an EKG to realize that. If you take that fact and then you think about the, just let's look at the moon for starters, it's a rock in space. 
And that rock in space basically makes all the water on planet Earth go up and down. The tides go up and down according to the cycles of the moon. Our body is 80% water, and there's an influence with the moon and us. You can talk to any police station, prison. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, there's a there's a correlation. Now, does it mean that the moon is directing our life? No. My belief is that all of the planets, if you extrapolate it out and take the moon and Mars and Jupiter and Venus, all of them, we are part of that whole system. And I was recently at the Kennedy Space Center. Have you ever been there, George? I have not. No, I bet that's fantastic, though. It is fantastic. And I actually got to touch a moon rock, which is pretty cool for an astrologer to do that. But when you are sitting there at the Space Center IMAX theaters and watching this whole scene of all the planets and all the majestic heavenly bodies up there, it's very hard to think that we're not a part of it. And we are actually, they talked about it at, at the Kennedy Space Center, that we are actually made of stardust because we have calcium in our bones, we have iron in our blood, we have carbon in our souls and nitrogen in our brain. So we're like 93% stardust and we're just basically stars that have people names. And when we look at an astrology chart, we're basically looking at a map of where everything was at the moment you took your first breath. So this map is just that. It's a map. It's a navigational tool. And it's a lot like a piece of music. So some people are born with a pattern that sounds like classical music, and some people have a chart that sounds like rap music. And an astrologer can say, look, if you've got rap music in your soul and your parents are both classical music charts, then you're going to have a difficult childhood. That's predictive, but it's not fortune-telling. It's just describing the reality of what two or three different patterns look like when they're all together. And it's a complicated um, esoteric science to interpret, but the trick with it in my book is that it has to be done in a way that people can hear it and that they can translate the information I'm giving them into something super useful, practical. It's why I love teaching astrology to people. I want to share this wisdom so that people can start using it on a daily basis with their friends and families. And it can calm everybody down, George. That's the number one thing I want people to realize. There, there's a way to explain why things are the way they are. And once you have that knowledge, you start looking at life from an astrological perspective. It's literally a language to help you have compassion for yourself and other people. Like you wouldn't get mad at a dog, like a basset hound for having short legs. Why would you get mad at a person for having a chart that has a particular thing that might be irritating for you? But then when you look at them and you say, wow, they can't help it. That's the way they're designed. Let me tell you something. That's a game changer for people. And it, I've changed many people's um, relationships with their husbands and wives and children because I just say to them, look, this is the way this person is designed. This is not good or bad. Not everyone can be just like you. And we as humans tend to think everyone should be just like us, and that's just not the way it is. We're all very, very different. 2023 has been a strange year, Leslie. There's carjackings, there's robberies, there's muggings on an increase uh, we've got the war in Ukraine and Russia. We've got the situation in Israel with Hamas. What is 24 going to look like? Well, this is accurate. What you just said about 2023, it was and still is not an easy time. We are basically under the cloud of Neptune, and Neptune makes everything confusing, and it's the way I describe it is like putting Vaseline all over the mirror. You cannot see clearly. And this is very, very frustrating. Uh, I call 2024 the year of ugly truth. So at least we've got the word truth in there. We're, we're moving forward. But there's definitely um, an, an ugliness of things getting revealed through these wars and everything. And we have to get through this period. It's not really going to get a heck of a lot better until we get into 2026. So we have two more years of oh, this. Geez. And I know, sorry to say that, but 
again, if we understand it, then what what I would suggest people do to handle this time, because it is stressful, um, we're facing a crisis, and we have to reinvent how we operate within this very, very stressful time for people. And we have a baseline of familiarity with the energies because we've gone through a big total recalibration since COVID. And 2023 was very internally difficult for many, many people. In 2024, there's definitely more forward movement, but it's intense. This is this is going to be a very intense year. And mid-April of 2024, there are some aspects going on that are somewhat suffocating. I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen then, but it's uh, there's a, a aggressive energy out there. So I think what people need to do is think about how micro movements can make a huge difference. And if there's something you really, really believe in and you want something to change, and if every day you do some little thing that helps bring that about, I think it helps all of us collectively try to think about moving forward and not to get passive. Um, because again, as I said, if you're highly, highly charged about something, then you're getting attached to it. And we want to try to get to a more neutral place and not overreact to things. And I think the other key for right now is to really connect with nature. I, I know I've said this before, but it is a major, major thing to help people feel more centered and grounded. And a lot of us don't take the time to do that anymore, but I can promise folks out there that if you try it, you'll notice that you are able to stay calmer. Um, that That's a huge thing right now because, again, we're, we're these electromagnetic people walking around on this earth and the earth has an ability to recalibrate us. And that's what we need right now because it is scary out there and people don't feel safe. And there's a lot of issues with um, mental illness right now because people don't have the tools and the language to, to navigate this time. I think that it used to be that uh, spirituality and going to church and things like that would help people, but more and more people are feeling lost. They don't exactly know how to find balance and safety and comfort, and that's where I think astrology and astrologers can help bring this kind of peace and an awareness, because if you understand it, then you can deal with it. So if I tell you that this year is still going to feel very similar to 2023, you just realize you're not going crazy. It's just the way it is right now, and it will get better. It just is going to take a little while. Do you help businesses uh, make decisions because of astrology? Yes, I, I do. I work with several um, CEOs and help them with hiring new employees. It's very important to understand how astrology can help you build a team where you have people whose charts are all harmonious with one another. Um, I also help um, people with contract dates and trying to figure out the most opportune time to ask for what you need. And just recently, I had a client who said her husband had a big decision to make with a job where he would have to go to another city and start over. And there was a lot of conflict within the family around whether or not to do this. And I said, look, I said, according to your chart, it, you could do it or not do it. It doesn't matter. But if you're going to do it, please, on these dates, make sure you ask the boss for everything you want, even in your wildest imaginations. You have the most incredible aspects for getting what you want on these dates. So he tried it out and he put down everything that was almost impossible to imagine that the boss would say yes to. And guess what, George? He got everything. Wow. So that is how astrology can help. It, it helps you work with the energies that are out there. And everyone's got a very particular, different chart from everyone else. So you have to go pretty deep into the chart to figure out these exact things. And that's where it's different than the type of astrology people have with magazines and horoscopes where they do monthly readings for all cancers. I, I go much, much deeper. I don't look at it just from sun sign astrology. What did you see to tell him to go for it? 
he had these amazing what I call golden aspects on these. There were three days that he had in November where I said, look, it, it seems like whatever you do is like golden. You can, you can ask for what you want, and you'll probably get it. I said, these are super rare. Go for it. And that's, that's how I told him to go do that, and he did. Thank goodness he listened to me. So now he's a, a big fan. His, his wife is a student of mine, and I don't think he knows that much about astrology, but I think he's starting to come around and realize maybe there's something to this. And that, that's the trick, George. So many of the listeners over the years I've been on this program with you have become students of mine or clients of mine, and it's been such a joy and such an honor to help people just have happier lives and to feel as though there's a way to m navigate, there's a way to move through life in a way with a lot more elegance. And that's what I'm going for all the time with people. How can we compassionately get people to have the kind of lives that they want to have? And there's always a way out. That's the most important thing. As I told you, my chart... Very easily, I could have gone down a very deep, slippery slope to a not very good place. And thank God my mother sent me to that astrologer when I was 19. She literally saved my life. And I feel that it's now my duty to pass it on. Um, I feel like it's been probably the greatest miracle of my life for sure. And it's been that um, impressively accurate um, that I, I cannot deny that this is a very useful thing for people to understand and to use. And so for me, it's a great honor to, to be able to teach it. That's really what I'm focusing on now is trying to get more people to understand how to use this in a simple way. Not It doesn't take 40 years to be able to use it in a way that you can understand it. I, ha I have one client right now who's um, she had heard me on Coast to Coast last time, and she had been trying to learn astrology for 20 years and couldn't get anywhere. So she decided, oh, I guess I'll give it one more try. So she signed up for my class, and she's so happy now. And she's just smiling. She said, I finally get it. it, it, it there's a way to, to get it. You either have a, a teacher who speaks to you, or if you don't, you have to find one that does. Well, and you do it the right way, Leslie. We're going to come back and take calls with you next. If you want a reading, give Tom your birth month, day, and year, and then ask Leslie a specific question.